Good morning, guys. Uh, can everyone hear me clearly? And can everyone see my, uh, is everyone looking at the charts that are on my de desktop right now? Guys? Is the audio coming through okay? And can y'all see? Great, David, thank you so much. Okay, so let's get started with um, kind of the executive preview and then we will jump over to uh, looking at some of the other stuff on the market. So we've had an interesting overnight range. Uh, Globex highs pushed close to the year to date high, but we did not quite hit them. We tried, we just didn't quite hit them. Um, let me see. And the drawing tool, is that coming across okay? Can everyone see that? Let me see if I got all the technology organized at one time. Can someone just throw me a quick Y out there if they can see it? Perfect. Okay. Awesome. So, um, overnight, we traded to um, 1843. This whole area, the first thing I want to point out, from this year-to-date high at 1846.5, um, really all the way down to this 1842.50, technically, this is all a critical area in here. Okay. And so I'm obviously not going to uh, throw up a four or five, uh, uh, not above the year-to-date height, but right up to the year-to-date height. I'm not going to make this all one zone. The majority of the rejection has come between this, uh, when we've been up here, between this 1844.50 um, and 1842.50, uh, including last night. So a break above here would make it fairly easy, or should make it fairly easy, to cross above the year-to-date high. Um, there's not a lot standing in the way. So... Uh, essentially, if I get into this area, I want to short far enough back, and I probably want to, um, I'm going to have to gauge this area uh, simply off of whether we break Globex high or not versus a year-to-date high, because you have to make a decision on how you're going to handle it. So how I'm going to handle it is uh, like I would any other Globex high. I'm going to expect rejection the first time we get up into Globex high, but I'm quite aware that that trade could simply get busted and right, run right into or even through the year-to-date high and rotate up into initial resistance. Uh, so this area is going to be a bit tricky. I, I don't like it when, when areas get consolidated like this. And so the way I handle it in my trade plan is I simply make a decision as to how I'm going to handle it and accept the consequences. In this particular case, the way I'm going to handle it is I'm going to shoot for this 1843 and a quarter um, as an area to put on a trade, uh, assuming rotation and everything else. Uh, and then two points behind the zone, and I'll probably move that to two and a half points behind the zone to allow it to come up and tag the year-to-date high and hopefully reject. The other way to handle that, or that when I was thinking this through last night, is simply waiting for the year-to-date high uh, and taking a shot there with a uh, two-point stop behind. Uh, I, I just, when I went back and looked how pre previous highs were broken versus where the Globex highs were, uh, the Globex um, high tended to hold it the first time through and get rejection lower. And then it took a second move to get through Globex high to go ahead and test the year-to-date high. Uh, so uh, that's how I'm going to handle that area. You should think about it. Your three options for trading there, this is aimed towards my trading coach, uh, my uh, trading clients, is either simply A, I'm not going to take a trade here because that's simply too wide and I can't control my risk, or I'm not willing to take a, a loss when it's not clearly defined and in this case it's not as clearly defined as it is on most other days. Uh, number two choice, uh, I'm simply going to work at the year-to-day height and not worry about Globex high and choice number three is the way I'm going to handle it which is given the proper rotation I will take a shot at Globex highs to the short side with a two-point objective lower uh, and a stop of probably two and a half behind the zone so that I can also encompass this uh, 1846.50 which was the year-to-date high. So I hope that's pretty clear. That's exactly how I'm going to handle that. Um, it looks like they're going to try to open it here down 1838, which is right at the bottom of Thursday's high. We obviously rejected right out of 1840 and a quarter, right at the close. So the first thing we're going to do is look, is there a strength or is there not strength? How are we going to gauge that? Well, this is gap fill right here at 1836. So uh, if we're unable to come down and test this gap fill to begin with, right, we come down, we, we don't hit it, and we start hitting new highs, that would be a sign. Let me change the color of this. It 
if we're unable to get gap fill, which is right at 1836, right, we open up and uh, obviously we come in and we don't uh, actually tag it, it would be a sign of strength. Um, and I would look for a push up to test certainly Globex highs, uh, followed by year to date highs and then into initial resistance. There are, um, I spoke to a friend of mine who trades a lot of options, there are a ton of uh, open contracts sitting at 1850, it would be a logical place to pin the uh, close today. But again, that's not a prediction or where we're going to go. It's just simply if we start heading up, uh, I'm going to that's going to mean two things for me. Around this 1850 area, I expect it to get choppy because what happens is we start doing this, right? Where they kind of bring it on both sides. And then at the end of the day, they just kind of close it right there at 1850. If you look at previous closes, you'll notice that they uh, tend to pick a, a specific options point and target it for the close. And they tend to nail it right at. Uh, the 3.15 uh, central time close. So something to keep uh, your mind uh, your mind on in terms of if we start hitting that direction, right? I wouldn't get overly bullish at this point thinking we're going to rotate higher. The only way that we, the, since there are so many contracts sitting in 1850, the only way we're going to break higher is if we break this strike uh, and that could cause a short squeeze uh, to push us considerably higher. But that's a pretty rare event um, and uh, I, I just, I, I'm not certain or I, I, I guess I don't anticipate that happening. I don't think there's any kind of big enough news to cause that to occur unless the break is on the downside, right? With the housing starts, I believe uh, we have the housing number at uh, the top of the hour, 9 a.m. So um, on the downside, look at the, let's look at the downside scenario and where, where I'll be trading. So if we open at this 1838 area, I simply will not have enough of a rotation down into uh, gap fill and Globex slow. Uh, to call a trade out at that location. Remember, I need a six point rotation before I'm calling trades out uh, in any particular location. Why? Because that's what I think my uh, newer clients and my most conservative clients should be looking for at a minimum to take a trade. Okay, it doesn't mean that I won't take a trade in this area. Uh, I am an aggressive trader. It simply means that what I'm trying to guide people to do is to have the most um, high odds, mentally calming, an easiest approach to trading the ES and building a successful, consistent track record. Okay, and if you're trading aggressively, it's harder to do that, quite frankly. Um, and if you're not balanced, right? If you start trading aggressively um, versus trading, all trading is aggressive, but less aggressively versus more aggressively. When you're trading less aggressively, it's easier to build a consistency, build your confidence, uh, maintain your focus, and increase your trade size over time. The trade-off to that is you simply get fewer trades. You have to decide what kind of trader you are. I've been doing this for 20 years. I'll pretty much trade everything under the sun as long as it fits into my trade plan. And it's that's important. Whatever you're going to do, have it built into a written trade plan that you can execute. And that trade plan should be clear enough so that if you hand it to someone else, they should be able to read it, look at your executions, and see that you followed it quite clearly. And if that's not the case, you probably have work to do on your trade plan. And if you don't have a written trade plan, I highly urge you to get one. So, uh, assuming we, we maintain this open here at this 1838, right? That opens the door. The closest it opens for me is down here at the white zone. And I can tell you, I will take a trade the first time into the white zone, assuming we open anywhere uh, in this area. There is a potential zone um, at 1832 to 1830. Um, I simply chose to leave it out. It, it, it could have gone either way. I could have made 1829 to 1831 and split the difference. I went with uh, a, what I thought was a conservative approach and backed the zone up, but it could have easily, the front of the zone could have easily been right here at 1832. Uh, I'm just simply hoping for a stretch into the white zone. Uh, again, this goes towards trying not to stack up all these zones all in one area and letting the market get a good stretch. Uh, how do I have to, um, how am I going to compensate for that if I don't get that stretch, I'll simply use the first hour high or low, assuming we get into this area, to create a um, at least a mental point of uh, of inflection. If the first hour lands in this at this point, as opposed to coming down here, I'll simply create a new zone after the first hour. I hope that's not too confusing, but that's what I have to do if I'm going to leave these if I'm going to leave more space in between these zones um, prior to the open. So that's how I'm handling it. In the meantime. My plan is I will take a trade at the white zone. If we open up here at 1838, I'll probably take it right at the front at 1829. Also, I'll be willing to take a trade at Thursday's lows. This assumes no consolidation right in front of the zones 
in both these cases. Okay, uh, I'll be looking, my primary trade is to look for a rotation up for two points. That's my primary target. Uh, guys, if y'all are my trading clients, y'all should have a written trading plan for your trailers as to how much of your, what percentage of the contracts you're trading you're going to leave as trailers and what your targets are, and particularly with uh, regard to the uh, trap trades. So let's look really quick at where the trap trades would set up today in, um, in ES. Okay, so we actually have a couple of places. Um, if we trade, um, currently we're trading below Thursday's high, right? If we get back above Thursday's high uh, and then fall back in, potential trap trade. Uh, if we trade above uh, Globex high and then fall back in, potential trap trade, where would that trap go in both these cases? Well, Globex low is just sitting right there at 1835 and a quarter. It's not that far to travel. Um, if we get up to initial resistance and then we come back down and we close below that year-to-date break, right, that could also send us uh, back to the other end of the range, which is Globex low. The extended range, right, if we truly go end-to-end, -end, right, would be all the way down here at Thursday's low. Um, I wouldn't bet on it. But also take a look at where we are. We're at 1836. We've had on most days 20 to 30 point ranges. Uh, so 1836 from where we're, uh, excuse me, uh, from where we're turning right now, 1838, that brings 1818 into play. Um, and that also brings uh, 1858 into play on the other end of the range if we open where we're trading right now. Uh, hold on. Someone asked me a question. I apologize. Give me one second. Uh, Alan, uh, for my clients to use TradeStation, he asked if there's a more effective way to uh, put the zones uh, on the chart. The only way I know to do it is to either draw them on your own system or if you have TradeStation and you're a, a client of mine, I'm happy to uh, drop the file, which by the way, guys, I realize I have not done and I will do it in just a minute. I'll be wrapping up today by um, 8.15. I will not be beyond that so everyone will have the, uh, the uh, software on their desktop. So sorry I forgot this morning, but you guys, you'll get that shortly. And uh, yes, Alan, I do drop the file to my clients so they can just open it up in their trade station and uh, have them set. But uh, I don't have a better way of doing it than that. Uh, going back, Thursday's low, right? That's extended range right down to the bottom. The other way that trap trades would set up, or at least the trap trades that I'm looking for, is we have Globex low at 1835 and a quarter. We come down, we test the white zone, we get back above. That would set up a trap trade where to potentially Globex high would be the other end of the range at this point. Also, Thursday's high would be the first target. Globex high would be the second target. I would assume that Globex high is going to be the target if we trap back up, but uh, you can never make that assumption. So if I'm trading the trap trade off these trailers, I would definitely be scaling. Obviously, I'm scaling anyways, but I would be scaling at Thursday's high, and certainly a Globex high. I would not bet on the break. I might leave one or two uh, for a possible break in the afternoon, right? The other place we get a trap trade from is if we get below Thursday's low and then we get back up above, that would obviously uh, set us up for a potential um, trap trade back to Globex lows of 1835 and a quarter. If we can recover that, uh, you know, step by step, we could eventually see Thursday's highs and then uh, Globex highs again. Uh, but these aren't predictions. These are simply, uh, for those of y'all who are new, these aren't predictions on what I'm saying the market is going to do. What this simply is, is if I'm trading and I'm trading and I take a trade and my trade calls for trailers and I take a trade out of Thursday's low, right? And all of a sudden I find myself um, trade, excuse me, let's correct that for a second. Let's say I take a trade out of, if we break Thursday's low, we trade back up above Thursday's low, right? We've broken, we've come back above, I've left trailers and I've been scaling and the next thing I do is I find myself sitting here going, oh, we just closed above Thursday's low. Well, there's a good chance that we're gonna trade back up to Globex low is a strong possibility. It's not that big a stretch. It's 1823 to 1834, it's only 12 points, which we've been achieving quite easily, right? So that means two things. Uh, when we're coming up to the white zone, I'm gonna be cognizant that uh, that's not that big a stretch and we can break up and um, still make it all the way over here without a significant rotation at this zone realizing that the trap is now in play, okay? But it's not a prediction. We could simply break Thursday's low, come back up, and A, it can certainly fail, right? It can be a fake uh, trap trade and break back down to the downside. Um, it can simply tra have a trap trade, sit here, and do nothing. 
Uh, I don't make predictions on where the market's going in particular. What I want to do is recognize what is in play if certain things occur. And generally speaking, when we ca recapture lows and highs after they've been broken uh, in either direction, we tend to trade to the other end of the range. So uh, I'm pretty sure my clients are all clear on, on what that trade setup looks like. Things to watch out for this morning. What am I looking for primarily uh, to guide me? The 9.30 to 10.30 area, I'm looking for reversals at that time of day. If you're having a difficult time or you're getting smacked around in the first hour with having difficulty getting your rotations, and everybody is having difficulty with rotations, not, and I don't just mean in this room, everyone across the board is having a hard time with the lack of rotations in the market. <clears throat> We're driving straight up and straight down uh, with... I, with very few mornings like we had yesterday where we're getting good movement up and down. And most days we're getting small rotation and then taking off one direction or another. And it's um, once it picks a direction, it keeps going in that direction. And it's getting very frustrating for counter traders. So pick your spots wisely and read the, read the price action. If you see like midday after 10 o'clock, if you looked at that price action here, we can look at it. I'll show you what I was talking about. Okay. We got good trade action. We hit 9.30 and we started, compare this and this to this, okay? This is where I make my money. This is where I get, requires extreme exercise and patience, right? And this is just almost intolerable to me over lunch. I, I don't know why anyone would enter with a two-point range and drive yourself batty. Okay, just good luck with that. That's not for me. If uh, you know, some people ask, well, am I taking a trade at 12 o'clock? This is why I don't take trades at 12. I either end up the majority of the time with something like this, or I end up with zones getting busted randomly. Either way, it's not good for my P&L or my uh, uh, peace of mind. So uh, that's all I have to say about that. If you see this price action going like this, don't get yourself crushed, right? At least if you're going to trade, wait till the end of the day where there's at least more motion. Secondly, the other thing I have to warn about, these, wow, I didn't mean to do that. Let's race that. These drives, at the end of the day, I keep hearing from people over and over again. See this right here where we just drove straight down for six points, no rotation. This is at the very end of the day. This last whole last hour drove up, up, up very slowly with no relief. It was very difficult to capture this short. It literally waited, uh, made people wait to the last second. I think there was literally two minutes left in the market before the sell-off finally came. This is very difficult. We're getting drives in one direction in the last hour. If you want to trade it, um, good luck. It's, it's simply not um, not for me, and not unless you are very good at pinpointing your entries. 1840 and a quarter was perfect, and only 500 contracts got filled there yesterday. So I don't know what else to say um, outside of that. Um, the price action, you have to be able to look at price action and go, is this my kind of price action, yes or no? And I can tell you definitively, if you want to see what I trade best and where I make most of my money, is when we have this stuff going on. When we have this stuff going on is where I have my hardest time, zones get randomly busted, and it's very difficult to read anything into this price action because no one is having to reveal their hand because the swiftness isn't forcing anyone, or the lack of swift movement, isn't forcing anyone to reveal what their hand is or which way they're leaning from institutions to large individuals. No one's having to uh, expose themselves either way. And so by trading in here, you expose yourself to someone stepping in and either making a quick drive up or a quick drive down. It's just not for me. That's all I'm going to say on that. Um, getting back to the trade plan. So 9.30 to 10.30, uh, prime time for reversals. Um, open drives higher, right? What are they going to be characterized by? Um, open candle will either be straight up and cover six or seven points, or we'll have one, two, three candles with the first candle being the low of the day, right? What this indicates is not a guaranteed trend day up or range extension. What it does say to me very quickly is, watch out for it, because I don't want to get run over counter trading what could be a trend day up or a very strong move in the first hour. Uh, Alan, I, I don't uh, make recommendations on trailers. I, I do um, create those, uh, so he asked me, I'll cover that in just a minute. Let me get to the end of the trade plan, and I'll cover that right at the very end. It's a good question. Um, open drives down, right? Look just the same. One, two, three, or one very strong drive down. The tick, NYSE, uh, which is dollar sign T-I-C-K, um, 
will remain predominantly negative or predominantly positive. Doesn't have to be that way, but tends to be that way for the first hour, indicative of range extension and or trend day up. On those days, it does not get very easy to counter trade those trades until after uh, 9.30 really, but particularly 10 to 11 o'clock is the best time to start looking for counter trades if we're going to have a uh, failed range extension or if we're going to go into balance and you want to try to trade uh, the top and bottom of that um, of that range. But uh, I'm very weary or leery of open drives higher. I'd like to try to catch them. There are ways to catch them that I'm not going to go into right now. And I certainly don't see us indicated uh, for an open drive, so there's no need to cover it. But I can tell you among retail tra traders, open drives higher and lower and trend days cause enormous amount of damage to their account. And so my primary objective is to help people sidestep them. Uh, I do uh, try to help my coaching clients actually get on the right side of them. But first and primarily, uh, don't lose money. Uh, second indication, uh, let's say we want to tick. Uh, oh, lack of rotation. Rotation will be less than two points generally, and it'll be very hard to come by. The market will more likely, when it gets to zones on trend day up, tend to kind of do one of these little balance deals. Okay. Most of the time, I went back and looked. When I'm getting paid on these zones, it's spending less than 15 minutes in the zone to pay me my two points. So 25 minutes is my max in any one of these zones. And my inclination, just to make it simple, I go through additional options with my clients. But my, but you can assume after 25 minutes that I've closed this position or moved my stop to break even. Uh, if I get into a trade in any of these zones and it doesn't pop out, and I haven't been stopped, of course, uh, within that period of time. That is my assumption. Um, I, I am generally not opening positions, with rare exceptions, after 11 a.m. Okay, And I am hesitant to trade in the afternoon, and I am cutting my trade size uh, due to the less, um, how, I don't know what you call it, less predictability, even on, on small ranges, right? It's just hard to tell which way it's going to go. And I don't initiate trades 95% of the time in the last hour. Most of the easy money, and I use that term very lightly, but most of the easy money occurs between market open and 11 a.m. Uh, and that's all you need to make a lot of money. And also all you need for guys who are new in this room, right? My focus on it is making one or two points, preferably two, right, on one to two trades a day, and we can usually get that wrapped up uh, in the AM. So I think I covered all of the uh, possibilities, also what I'm looking for in terms of trap trade. Um, I really think they're going to try to make a stretch to 1850 unless the housing data is really bad. Also, prior to the housing data, if we trade, okay, if we open up and we trade, let's say we open right here at uh, 1839, which would be right uh, right in, underneath Thursday's high. And we do one of these jobbers coming into the housing data. You really have to consider the housing data, the open of the market, right? Meaning we can get an open drive off that data. You could assume a trend day up from that point if we get that or range extension, right? But if we balance going into that number, okay, um, whichever way we react could develop into a um, open drive higher, open drive lower. Also important to remember, um, I don't watch the news. I don't care what the news is generally. However, I do kind of look back to see what it was and see how the market reacted. And to every bit of negative uh, economic piece of data, we have had on most days responsive buyers, and the reason's quite clear. The more bad econ data we get, the more uh, chance of continued QE, which is what every trader and their brother uh, once it's obviously like crack for us and we love it uh, and it's basically putting a put underneath the market for all of us and that is why we're getting responsive buys also remember your trailers right where we come down just like yesterday and we get responsive buyers usually this occurs between 9 30 and 11 a.m right and the same thing on the other side if we open drive up um, we haven't been getting these big reversals back to the downside what we've been getting on the upside is drive up we get to that 9 30 to 10 30 and we we kind of have been doing this there have not been very many failed range extensions um, really in years <laughs> actually now about a year and a half two years we just we don't get a lot of failed range extension where we actually come back down break the uh, break the open and trade lower so um, usually the uh, two options are on extension up is either simply range extension and balance or true trend day up where we close near or at the high of the day you got to recognize the price action that goes along with conditions that are unfavorable 
to counter trend trading. It's not that it can't work. It's how much energy do you want to spend on it? Let's go look at uh, um, the NASDAQ really quick. I haven't finished out my chart there, but it's close. Even track on time. 13. I want to finish it up here in the next minute or two. Okay. Um, simply put, on NASDAQ, you want to watch where the potential trades are, right? And obviously those are going to occur. Um, I'll have... Uh, I'll have Globex highs and lows plugged into this in just a minute and see where they figure in. But essentially, uh, the low of the day and um, Thursday's high, right? Currently, we're trading at 36.7750, which puts us right at um, yesterday's high. So if we get above yesterday's high, right, we reject off the year-to-day high and we get below uh, both gap fill, right? It wouldn't be enough just to simply get below Thursday's high. I need to see us below gap fill. I would assume the trap trade, and that certainly opens, opens us up uh, for a move down to the white zone here uh, and potentially down to Thursday's low. Again, um, NASDAQ, if we look at the price action, it has been, it has not been leading over the last couple of days, but if we just go back and look at the price action really quickly, we can see that uh, it's not really falling apart. All it's doing is it's just consolidating off of this big move up is all it's doing. Nothing's happened. Um, Thursday's low is really key for it to hold, obviously. Uh, I don't think it'll get uh, much past the white zone today on the downside. If it does, um, I'll know to change my tune in terms of what I'm looking for today. But the trap trade areas are going to occur um, in this area and in this area. And then also uh, reference uh, Globex high, Globex low. Globex high uh, is currently sitting at uh, 36.84, which puts us uh, right here, right at the year-to-day height, oddly enough, right? So if we also see a uh, break above, this is also initial resistance. So you might as well just make this entire zone right here a critical area, 3,700 all the way down to uh, 3,684. It's a 15-point zone, right? And obviously, if I'm going to try to take a trade uh, in uh, NQ, the ranges have been 30 to 60 points. So uh, for my most, for my least aggressive traders, right, I'd be looking up at 3,700. And also, don't be shocked if we get above, if you get a huge cash squeeze. There's a ton of cash on the sideline, from what I understand. I don't do the numbers myself. Um, and you got to imagine that there's some people who try to short up in this area praying for a rollover for whatever bizarre reason they're doing that in the NASDAQ is beyond me, but sure. Uh, there must be some people short, and if we get above the year-to-date high, right, and then we get above 3,700, round numbers are usually good points to take shorts from, but you just got to weigh. It's Friday afternoon. Uh, those are always great potentials for short squeeze at the end of the day. Also, I do not know where the options uh, with the largest open positions are, but if we bust that strike, it could also cause a uh, short squeeze as well. You'd have to assume anyone shorting up here in large size are, are using op options to hedge off that risk. So uh, we'll see how that trades out. Um, also, it, it's important to note as we're climbing closer, right, we're moving closer and closer to the highs. So uh, beginning to look for an open drive is going to be important in this area. So the trap trades, once again, um, year-to-day high can create a trap trade over and below. Um, Thursday's high and Globex, this whole zone right here, right above and then back below could create a trap fill, uh, a trap trade. On the bottom side, the Globex low is sitting up here somewhere. So if we were to break Thursday's low again, right, and then get back above, it would not be surprising to see us trade all the way to the other end. Over the past couple of months, this pattern, if we get a sell-off for some reason in the morning, and we turn around and come all the way back in the afternoon, okay, don't be shocked if that happens. I keep hearing from people who say, I couldn't believe it came all the way back in the afternoon. Well, look at your charts. It's pretty easy to believe it. It's been doing it again and again and again for months now. So um, keep all of that in mind. I'm definitely leaning towards the long side, and I'm definitely a little bit more cautious today on the short side. I just don't see what's going to get the market down outside of a bad housing number. And a bad housing number, people are simply going to go, oh, more QE. And you're going to find responsive buyers to that. So I'm going to lean towards looking for long trades. And I'm going to be a little bit slower to short this morning uh, simply because we are pressing up at the highs. Um, really, that's my executive summary. There's not much to show on the volume profile. I'm not going to do the uh, trend lines this morning. You should be able to 
uh, do that on your own. Let me get uh, this cleared out here. Uh, okay, let's move this out. Okay, on this is NQ. Um, we're actually, believe it or not, one timing uh, to the downside, uh, but it, it's not significant. It's more of a balance, right? Clearly, that 3640 has become important. The area below 3640 is that 36, excuse me, uh, 3530 to 3520 area, really starting from right here. 3536, I believe it is. 3526 down to about 3515, this whole area. I would expect response to buyers here. This is where we broke out from last time. We haven't backside tested into here. There is an open gap sitting right here at 3579. And I would expect response to buyers here first. If we get down here, it would seem like it would take a miracle at this point. Uh, and I would certainly expect response to buyers into this area as well. Uh, there's not a lot to see here. I, I really just think we're consolidating and uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to kind of guess, well, probably going to hit new highs sometime very soon, possibly today. Um, on, let's go look at... Yes. Same thing. We're just consolidating. We're obviously right below prior highs. And uh, again, that 1840 and a quarter was rejected yesterday. I would not necessarily expect it to reject again today like I did it. Um, excuse me. This 1840 and a quarter rejected yesterday. And prior to that, we had this attempted double top. Uh, I get the feeling this double top isn't going to hold. And I imagine we're going to close somewhere between 1850 and 1860 today. It's just. There's not a lot fighting it. Uh, we aren't one timing. Uh, we, we broke this one timing phase. Uh, and we could certainly have failed range extension, by the way, guys. I want to mention, you know, if we get up here, right, and we trade back below, I would definitely look for the, you know, for trade back into the range. But there doesn't seem a lot to be holding the market back. And I don't feel like getting crushed uh, in a one way market. So that's why I'm a little more hesitant on the short, short, on the short side, but I'll flip. At a moment's notice, I want to look at the 24-hour chart really quick to see where there's support on this thing. And when we do that, we can see that really the biggest area of support is sitting right down here again at this 1820 level. And I would expect that uh, to come into play again. Below that, we have this 1810 to 1808 level. I would imagine it's going to uh, create quite a bit of support. And we have actually all of this down here, 1800, um, really all the way down to uh, 1790. Again, I don't think we're going to get there, certainly not today, short of some kind of crazy number coming out, which I don't expect. Um, that's all I got today, guys. Again, mind your, mind your stops. Don't let any one day matter. Don't let any one trade matter. The market's been easier to the upside than it has to the short side. And the trades, uh, the counter trades um, after 930, are easier than the counter trades prior to 9.30. It's pretty simple stuff. Have a trade plan and build on that trade plan. Uh, hey, it's my pleasure, guys. Alan, uh, Alan, I do. Uh, I don't make recommendations on – none of this should be considered a trading recommendation, first of all. And secondly, uh, you need to have your trade plan designed around um, your trailers. And I generally don't talk about that publicly. I work on that with my coaching clients. But just uh, briefly, try to figure out what the ranges are. And I always recommend to scale along the way. And uh, if you want more specific help with that, you're welcome to contact me. Uh, and when I have space, I'm happy to help people out. Um, but uh, you can email me at tradeandperform at gmail.com. But that's about as specific as I want to get just in general on trailers. Other than um, if you're building your account and you're just starting off, you don't need trailers. If you want to reduce anxiety in trading, you want to reduce fear in trading, have your entry, your stop, and your exit all pre-planned. And let the market do what it's going to do, right? Don't try to – capturing 10 points is hard. Capturing two points is a very high odds affair. And that's why I focus on the two points. Anyways, I'm going to drop off. i got to get these um, – got to get this over to my clients, the, uh, the files over to my clients, and uh, get ready myself. So everyone have a great day. I hope everyone had a good week. And uh, we will uh, talk to you all later.